Welcome back. This is part five of our pathfinding exploration. And in this video, we're going to finally arrive at the very popular A star pathfinding algorithm. In our last video, we implemented the Dijkstra search algorithm, which gives us nice, you know, shortest paths through our map from our start to our goal. The problem is that it spends a lot of time exploring big areas of the map that don't have anything to do with the final path. And this on a large complicated map can be very inefficient. You know, each one of these squares has to be added to the frontier, it, its cost has to be calculated, and then each of its neighbors has to be added to the frontier. So even when we have a simple path, right, if I get rid of some of these walls, and we had a straight line, right, we start searching here and expand out, and we go in, oops, let me move this one, we go in all directions, even though the goal is right over here. So what we'd like to do is add a little bit of intelligence to this and tell it to try and find a path that gets, or prioritize a path that gets to the goal. And if we think about it right now, when we add tiles to our priority queue, the priority is the cost to move into that square. So from here, the cost of this square is 10, but so is the cost of this one, and this one, and this one. So they're all, they all have equal costs, and so they all have equal priorities. What we'd like to do is give this one a higher priority than this one, so that it's more likely to try this one first, and try this one last. And in the case of our priority queue, which is ordered by smallest to largest, that means we want to count this one as a, we want to give this one a lower priority value and this one a higher priority value so that this one will be higher up in the queue. And so what we can do is we can just measure how far away we are, right? From, move this a little closer here. <clears throat> Let's put it like this. So from here, the shortest path is one, two, three, right? If I look at my neighbors, this one is two away from the goal. This one is four away from the goal. So I should definitely use this one. So what we can do is just measure the distance and make that the priority so that the closer ones are better. Now, even if we have a situation like, uh, say this, right? And let's say this was the situation, right? This is the closest to the goal even though there's a wall in between. But that's okay, because it'll try this one first, find out it hits a wall, and then try the next closest one. So all we care about is just basically giving a rule of thumb to our algorithm to say, estimate the distance to the goal and try that direction first. Okay, so let's try that out in the code. We want to define that uh, rule of thumb that we're going to use. And in Mathematics and computer science, uh, you know, computer scientists don't like the word guess, so they have a fancy word for it, which is uh, heuristic. And so when you look at um, search algorithms, you'll often see them mentioning a heuristic. And all a heuristic is, is a fancy word for a rule of thumb. It's what is the rule I'm going to use to estimate the distance from my current square I'm at to the goal square. And so there's a lot of different ways you can measure the distance, right? As the crow flies or, you know, in a straight line or lots of other things. But what we're going to do is just use a simple, what's called a Manhattan distance calculation. And that just means how far something away is on a square grid. And so the heuristic to get from a uh, node We'll just say from node one to node two, All right? And we're going to use the Manhattan distance. Well, that's just what we're going to send back is is the node one dot x minus node two dot x plus node one dot y minus node two dot y. Right, so that's just going to give us the straight line distance. 
And what I mean by straight line distance is, you know, from, uh, let's get rid of some of these, from here to here, the distance is one, two, three, four, right? We're not counting diagonals in this case. And whichever way you go, one, two, three, four, it's still one, two, three, four. It's still four squares away orthogonally. Now the only problem with that is that this number is going to be like for example 4 in that example I just showed you. And if you remember from our costs, our costs are using not 1 and 1.4 but 10 and 14. We multiplied them by 10 so that we would have a, a nice integer number. Well that means that the movement costs, since they're multiplied by 10 relative to the geometric distance value. Um, we're going to take this whole thing and multiply it by 10 as well just to keep it at the same at the same scale. Okay. Otherwise it'll have a much smaller effect on the priority. So there's our heuristic. Right? And so we can take that heuristic and put it in our Dijkstra search as the priority. So instead of the priority being the cost, the priority is going to be the heuristic to get from Node, uh, node 1, which is the goal, or sorry, the end, and node 2, which is the next one, which I have converted to integer, so let me put that back into a vector so it'll have the x's and y's. Okay, so now if we run the program, we'll find that, look at that, it's doing much better. Let's try that straight line example again first. Let me get rid of some of these. All right, so here's my start, here's my goal, right? Remember when this was here and this was over, I'm sorry, this was here and this was over here, it was exploring in all directions. Well, now we can see it's definitely prioritizing squares that get it in this direction. So that's great. Now the drawback to this algorithm is it doesn't work, necessarily work well with complicated paths. So let's put Let's put the goal down here, right? There's a good example. So instead of just going down like this, which would have been best, it wound up going all the way around in this convoluted way. Right? Why did it go, why did it start here and go up this way instead of just continuing to go straight? Well, the reason is that from here, this got prioritized over this. And once it was here, this is closer. And it's still getting closer. You don't start getting far away until I'm here. And then it starts trying to go this way. So it's not necessarily smart. It's efficient. You can see I didn't explore a whole lot of the map that I didn't have to. But it doesn't find the shortest path. It gets confused by a lot of walls. If you have a complicated wall layout, you get all sorts of you know, strange paths. So the way we solve that is to not just use the heuristic by itself. We want to include the cost of movement as well as the estimate of distance. And if we do both of those things, then what we're doing is called the A star search algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back to the way it was. So we have our original extra search, right? The, the inefficient but good at finding the shortest path algorithm. And I'm just going to uh, duplicate it here and call this the A star search. Okay. And the only thing that's going to be different is when we calculate the priority, we're going to include the movement cost and we're just going to add the heuristic in the end in the end to the next vector or sorry next square okay and so what that's going to do is make the movement cost you know, if I run this real quick again it's going to make the movement cost count but also the distance so this it'll be the sum so the movement cost here is 10 Let's put, uh, let's put this nearby. The movement cost to here is 10, and the distance from here to here is 10, 20, 30. So the total 
priority of this will be 40, right? The normal cost of here is 10, but the distance is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, right? So this one will be 50. So 30 or 50, which one is it going to pick? It's going to pick this one. So it's going to prioritize both of those things together. And then what we'll see is we will have exactly what we want. Now to make this easier to see, uh, what I've done is I've created a version of this that has both searches happening, right? So here we have our Dijkstra search, right? And it's even, I had it print out, you know, how many, how, how long that path is, right? It's 14 steps, each one or 10, so there. Now if we see what, it, to see what it looks like under A star, I'm just going to hit space. So there's the A star, so you can compare the two. Right, we found the same short path, but we used much, much less time exploring the map. And as we move this around, you can see different examples. So here's a good one, right? So, so Dijkstra searched nearly the entire map to do this, but it found a path length of 290. A star wound up like this, explored much less of the map it's still a path length of 290. Now there are some slight differences in in the paths, right? The Dijkstra tends to favor long straight movements and then sharp turns while the A star will jog over kind of diagonal like. Remember we don't have diagonal movement enabled at the moment just to keep the example simple. It'll work just as well with diagonal. I'll turn them on in, in a second. But this makes it easy to compare how well things are going, right? Now, if we're really far away, A star is still going to have to search a large portion of the map, right? We're only saving a little bit. But as you imagine, if you can think about a, a grid that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, if there was a lot more map around here, Dijkstra would still be exploring it, right? And the simpler the path, obviously, the bigger the savings. Right, but this is, the, this is A star, and it's sort of the best of both worlds. It gives us the shortest path efficiency, uh, or sorry, the shortest path calculation of extra, but the much more efficient search of the heuristic. And here is one last example. I've gone and turned on diagonal movement so you can see uh, how it works, right? Again, we're finding the same path length. We might be choosing slightly different, a slightly different order in which to move, right? Under Dijkstra, it does the diagonals first and then a couple of straight down moves. And in the A star, it did the down moves first, right? But still, still the same idea. And we get the same path length, we get the same savings in search time and uh, efficiency. Okay. And that's A star. Now there are other search algorithms out there. So some of them are optimized for certain types of graphs, right? This is a square grid, so it's only one type of graph. And there's a lot more you can do to come up with different um, or improve efficiency and, and change how you're doing things. So with this, I think we'll, we'll wrap up our exploration of search algorithms. I'm going to do one more video after this, which is just going to explore a couple of examples of how you would use these to do to accomplish a couple of different goals. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.